just want to take a little break from the networking just to make a few comments. I'm Chris Cooney. It's my pleasure to welcome you here to the Thorny Lee Country Club, or golf club. It has a long, proud history. We're going to hear a little bit about that uh, in a moment. We are very pleased to have the former ambassador of Cape Verde here with us, but Vern Penner, as well as uh, the U.S. State Department Deputy Assistant Director Todd Haskell, who just flew in from D.C. Todd, I want to so I want to start with a quote this evening <clears throat> that we we found, and I think it's appropriate for tonight. We could ask you to just quiet down a little bit over by the bar. <laughs> and, I, and I quote, There is a flickering spark in us all which, if struck at just the right age, can light the rest of our lives, elevating our ideals, deepening our tolerance, and sharpening our appetite for knowledge about the rest of the world. Educational and cultural exchanges provide a perfect opportunity for this precious spark to grow, making us more sensitive and wiser international citizens through our careers. And that was a quote from President Ronald Reagan in uh, May of 1982, and I just thought it was very appropriate. Also thinking about tonight, it reminded me of the time that I've spent in Kenya and Cape Verde. Cherished moments and memories that always bring me great pleasure when I recall them. The natural beauty in both of these areas is amazing, absolutely amazing, and I encourage you to partake in it if you have a, have a chance. Uh, it is only rivaled by the people that I encountered while in each of these places. Whether it was uh, the Maasai guides who welcomed us in, onto their land and into their villages and later into their homes to meet their families when we visited, or the proud professional Rotarians who make up the membership of the three Rotary Clubs that I happened to visit in Cape Verde while there. I'm always reminded of how much we have in common as Rotarians, as business professionals, and really as people. I will always appreciate the time, commitment, and perspective they shared uh, with me as a visitor to their wonderful homes. And I will always be grateful uh, for the welcome and how welcome they made me feel. Uh, I hope we are doing the same for all of you here uh, while you're, you're staying in the area. So. I want to thank our event uh, partners uh, this evening. Uh, we, we first have Frank Clark, uh, president of Bridgewater State University, as well as Harold Tavares with Bridgewater State University. We have uh, Brent Warren, the past president of Rotary International, who's with us. We appreciate uh, your leadership and the spirit of collaboration in which you've gone into this event uh, with us, so we appreciate that. We also have with us Chris uh, Barron, who's the uh, general manager of Thony Lee Country Clubs. Let's have a round of applause for Scott Barron. I also want to thank uh, Voice of America, who's uh, here in Brockton today recording some of this. The Brockton Community Access, uh, who's recording this uh, for television later. The Enterprise Newspaper, and our photographer, Robin Howard of CNC. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> Many of you know that the Chamber recently held a very successful membership drive. We welcomed over 75 new companies into the Chamber during a drive in June. And we have some of those companies here with us. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, their presence here as well. Uh, we have uh, Sean Adejumo and Grace uh, Moracano from Trauma to Wellness, the Brockton office. We have uh, the Salvation Army in Brockton, Lieutenants Bramwell and Jenna Applin. We also have uh, Serenity Bello from Road to Responsibility. We have uh, Rosie Torres and Lisa Betancourt from the brand new Residence Inn in Bridgewater. We have Barry Green from Providing Excellence Through Technology. We have Mike Holmes from Mike Holmes Advertising Design. We have Christy Kendrick from Pop Top Sportswear and Monica Whitaker from MarketAmericaShop.com. In addition, we have uh, Linda May from Roof Drain Marker. We have Tim Ellers from Concord Wealth Management. And we have Sophie and Heaven Matthew from uh, Gl Glitz and Sparkle. So let's have a round of applause for our new
It is now my pleasure to introduce our event partners to say a few words on behalf of their organizations. Uh, tonight we have with us again the past president of uh, Rotary International here in Brockton, uh, Attorney Brent Warren. Brent. Good evening, welcome. Uh, this is a great event and, and one that really is a no-brainer for, for the Rotary Club. A lot of the members of the chamber are fellow Rotarians and vice versa. Uh, we welcome all of you. I want to spend, uh, send out a, a special thank you and welcome to our Mandela Fellows. It has been wonderful getting to know some of you this evening. I thank you very much for coming over. You're enriching our lives as much as we're enriching yours uh, with this cultural exchange and that's really what Rotary is all about. So I thank you and, and, and wish you the best in everything that you do. I just want to say a, a quick couple of words about what Rotary does. Uh, for those who don't know, we are an international service organization. We're run by small clubs in our communities. We do things both here uh, and abroad, local projects such as scholarships, uh, taking care of uh, people in need in our community, and then much bigger projects, which again, uh, talking with some of our uh, colleagues from overseas here, uh, some of the things Rotary does, uh, we've done water projects in Liberia. We're helping uh, uh, those who can't see down in South America. We've helped uh, build stoves and kitchens in South America. There's countless projects that we do, and the, the number one goal of Rotary International is the elimination and total eradication of polio, which has affected the people the world over. We're this close to pulling it off. Uh, I believe we're still, we're down to two country, countries left to go, uh, and it's gonna happen. It'll happen in our lifetime, which is, which is exciting, so. I thank you all for coming here tonight. I would encourage those members of the chamber and guests, come and explore Rotary. Come to one of our meetings. We meet at lunchtime on Thursdays right here in this room, noon, 12, 15. Be our guest, learn a little bit about it, give a little something back to yourself. You'll find it's a wonderful group of people and it, what you get out of Rotary is an immense amount. It enriches your life. It does for every Rotarian who's a member. So I thank you all and thank you for coming tonight. It's a great club. They meet here every Thursday. So we're pleased to be here uh, at Thorny Lee, and uh, as Brent mentioned, this is where the club meets as well. Uh, we have been blessed really with a new general manager here out of Burlington, Vermont, and uh, he really has hit the ground running, uh, made some wonderful changes, and we're so pleased uh, to have him running this uh, fantastic facility. Uh, in the city of Brockton. Please join me in welcoming Chris Barron, the new general manager of the community. Thank you, Chris. As he said, uh, I'm brand new to Thorny Lee, been here four months, moved my family and I down from Vermont, so everybody's been very hospitable, both, both amongst our staff and our membership and, and those in the community, so I'm grateful to that. I just want to welcome everybody. Hope you enjoy your night here at the club. We've got a great facility. We, we brag we have the best view in Brockton here as our, as our window state. So this facility is available for, for non-members for use for, for business meetings, for functions, weddings, corporate outings, you name it, we can provide it. So, so please keep us in mind if that, uh, if that comes across your table for your business. So I just wanna welcome all of those from the chamber, from the Rotary, our distinguished guests. Thank you for coming tonight. And I hope you have a wonderful evening and enjoy all of the food and service that Thorny Lee has to offer. And you have a wonderful evening. Thank you and welcome. It's now my pleasure to uh, introduce um, a native son who's done good and gone on to uh, make the city proud and, and all of us uh, very pleased in his recent decision as president of Bridgewater State University. Please join me in welcoming Frank Clark. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, General Manager Barron, I want you to know that the last time I played here at Thorny Lee, if memory serves, I, I hit a birdie, I hit an eagle, I might have hit a squirrel, a rabbit, and a chipmunk also, but uh, that's why I haven't been back. But it's great to be here. 
I, w I want to mention just a, a couple of words about Bridgewater State, and then I want to talk about our Mandela Fellows, and I want to introduce a special guest to say a few words for you as well. But we have a few Bridgewater people with us today. Uh, Dr. Mike Krasanik is here, Mary Waldron, a uh, hero of Brockton, I think, uh, I understand, is here. Dr. Wing Kai To, Diana Jennings, and Harold Tavares, who was mentioned earlier, are all here with us as well. Uh, I want to also thank the Chamber and the Rotary for their partnership. We really, uh, we've had a tremendous partnership over the years, Chris Cooney, Sue Joss, uh, the Rotary as well. We get so much work done for the people of this region by working together. And for our Mandela Fellows, I want you to know that when business and industry and higher education, education writ large, come together, to help the people of this region and to identify the issues that matter to this region and to advocate, whether it's to the state or the federal government or other entities, we always win when we come together. And the Chamber is one of those organizations that brings us together to identify those issues that really do matter to all of us in this region. So I want to thank Chris, Sue, for your, uh, your constant partnership and support as well. I want to mention uh, about Bridgewater State. I've been there for one year as president. It's been a great year. I graduated from Bridgewater State. I'm from Brockton originally. I just got back from a week's vacation. My first year, I did 2,430 meetings or events. So I needed a break, just a little break. But I wanted to come back for tonight, and my Mandela Fellows know that I love to be with them as well. We have 25 Mandela Fellows representing 16 African countries with us tonight. They're all right here. We are so very proud of them. <laughs> Former president of Bridgewater State University, Dr. Dana Molafari and I were in um, Washington about three years ago. We met with the U.S. State Department. We met with the United States Security Council um, to, at, the, at the White House. And we were talking about the importance of Africa the importance of Africa going forward economically and socially. It was very clear that the United States government had, had identified Africa as a priority going forward. So we wanted to be a part of the United States government outreach and efforts. So we, uh, we have a friend with us tonight that we consulted with. His name is U.S. Ambassador Vern Penner. He was introduced by Chris Cooney already. He's our diplomat in residence at Bridgewater State. I met him actually in Cape Verde on a trip. And uh, as uh, um, uh, Mr. Haskell, who I'm going to introduce in a minute, just described him as a force of nature. That is very true, actually, Todd, and we're so happy to have him as well. But our goal through our six-week program for our Mandela Fellows has been to connect the fellows with local institutions, organizations, and leaders in this region, really to broaden thinking, to develop understanding and awareness um, both for the benefit, the social, cultural, economic benefit of the United States, but also of the, of the communities and the, the nations that are represented by our Mandela Fellows. The State Department sees all of our fellows as future leaders, current and future leaders uh, in Africa. There's 25 here, but they represent a part of 1,000 leaders that are crisscrossing this country right at this particular point in time. We have kept them very, very busy. They should be exhausted. They should not even be standing up. We should let them sit down because we have kept them very busy. Tomorrow marks four weeks, right? Today they had a, a number of different programs and they just had uh, a whirlwind conversation with former U.S. Representative Congressman Barney Frank. And any one of you would be exhausted after that as well, trust me. So, uh, and I'm sure that they'll have much to say about that. But um, anyway, we've been so proud at Bridgewater State to, to host them. You may not know this, but Bridgewater is now the 10th largest higher ed in institution in Massachusetts. So we're number 10 out of about 120 <laughs> colleges and universities. Thank you. So having a focus on global engagement and cultural awareness, cl cultural competency makes sense for this region. It makes sense for Bridgewater State. And it makes sense, I think, for all of us in this room as well. But I want to have someone come up to talk about the uh, Mandela Fellows program a little more specifically. Now, I want to introduce him now. We are very, very fortunate to have Deputy Assistant Secretary Todd Haskell with us. He came up at our invitation. There's only 41 higher ed institutions across this country that are hosting Mandela Fellows. 
And I, I think, I, I don't want to get you in trouble, Deputy Assistant Secretary, but I think Bridgewater is the only one he's visiting because we were smart enough to invite him. So <laughs> we are very pleased that he's with us for a couple of days. Let me tell you about Todd Haskell. He became the Deputy Assistant Secretary in the Bureau of African Affairs in August 2015. Previously, he was the Africa's Bureau's uh, Director of Public Diplomacy and Public Affairs, directing the deployment of public diplomacy personnel and resources at 48 U.S. embassies and consulates in sub-Saharan Africa. In that position, he worked with posts in the field and agencies in Washington to implement the first Mandela Washington Fellowship, the signature program of President Obama's Young African Leaders Initiative, or YALI. He's been with the Foreign Service since 1985 and has attained the rank of counselor in 2012. That's a big deal. So we're very proud to have him here, and Deputy Assistant Secretary, if you could give us a few words. Thank you. Um, first, let me, let me thank uh, the, the Rotary Club, the Chamber, certainly Bridgewater, certainly Ambassador Penner, who, uh, force of nature. That's, that's my phrase for the evening. And then I'll finish with that part by using the South African comment when I lived there, all protocol observed. Yes, yes which is a quick way to get through the first part of the speech. The other, the other thing I've learned by um, living overseas for, for most of my career and participating in these events, if you're the sixth speaker, be really quick because everybody, <laughs> everybody's looking at the bar. So, so I will be quick, but I, I, I do just want to talk a little bit about the Mandela Washington Fellowship. Um, I have worked on this for uh, the last several years. It has been one of the terrific, I don't know, pride of, of my career to have been involved in this program. And I would like to claim credit for thinking of it, but then I'd be lying. So I won't. Um, actually, this is something that really came directly from President Obama, and I think the President really had a terrific insight after initially dealing with our Africa policy and traveling uh, to Africa early in, his, early in his first term, was that when he was traveling to Africa, he was just meeting with old people. And the leaders in Africa often, frankly, are um, older generation, and they represented something different. And the, and the President's insight was, uh, first, a few things. is 70% of Africans in Sub-Saharan Africa are under the age of 25. I mean, think about that number. And, and we're also looking at a generation of folks who are the best educated group of Africans uh, that we've ever seen. And finally, we're looking at a group of folks who have a tool in their pocket, and I imagine most of you have that tool in your pocket right now, that allows them to link and talk to each other and participate and learn and study and do all kinds of things from their you know, sitting, sitting, in their, uh, sitting in their office or sitting in their, their home or their room, that's really never existed before. I mean, one of the most fascinating things that I have seen happen across Africa is, is that when people have protested governmental action and, and tried to make positive change in their country, one of the first things that the government does, and I could start naming countries, but I don't want to embarrass people, one of the first things they do is shut down Facebook. One of the first things they do is shut down Twitter. One of the first things they do is shut down WhatsApp because they've realized that this tool is so powerful. What they also don't realize is, is that you guys are a lot smarter than the governments and you immediately, <laughs> immediately go to VPN and suddenly you're all communicating and, and, and creating those same challenges. So the president realized that really we had to think about a different way of, of communicating with countries and that meant, obviously, we continue to communicate with governments, and I'm a diplomat, and that's what we do, right? We, we talk to it. But we also had to start a conversation with the younger people in Africa. And the president came up with this idea of the Young African Leaders Initiative. And initially, that was bringing people like the Mandela Washington Fellows to Washington. So we started in 2013, and it was an online application. And we really kind of worried about that, because um, I don't know how many of you have been to Africa, but there's, there's kind of a sense that, like, how many folks are online and, and what, to what extent are we going to get people to fill out a whole application and write essays online and this is so impossible. And it was for 500 spots we set this online application across the continent. And we kind of wondered, well, I hope we get 500 applications because if we don't get enough applications to fill all the spots. 
So the numbers started coming in, and it was the final night of the application. We said, well, how many applications we had? And we had 50,000 people across the continent signed, signed up um, that first year. And if, if you do the numbers, yes. I mean, there was such a hunger among young Africans, uh, young people in Africa, to, for capacity, for, for the ability to learn leadership skills, but also to engage with the United States, quite frankly. And, and of course, that made us all very happy. So w we were absolutely thrilled until we realized that when you get 50,000 applications, you have to read 50,000 <laughs> We were totally not ready for that. But we figured it out. And, uh, and as I always like to point out, to participate in this program, uh, the, the criteria, you know, if you look, 500 out of 50,000, that's 1%. I mean, that's, that's better than Harvard, right? You know, it's better than Bridgewater State. So, <laughs> so uh, and, and so we bought 500 that first year, we bought 500 last year. This year we've doubled it to 1,000 at 40 different universities across the United States. As uh, we, right now, there are Washington Fellows. In a couple of weeks, they're all gonna go participate in a summit with President Obama. And, and what's really great is uh, across Africa, uh, the alumni of previous programs, and you guys will join that, are participating in organizations that focus on gender equality, that focus on entrepreneurship, that focus on making a real change moving forward, fighting corruption. I mean, I could go on, uh, the kind of things that uh, folks are working on. And, and there's grants, and they're working with their embassies overseas, and, and bringing about real change in Africa. So. I'm just so, I'm so happy to, to have had the chance to talk to some of you today. We'll, we'll have more of a chance tomorrow. But uh, I, I, I really do want to point out how important this is. I mean, the, the, the continent that is defining the future of the world right now is Africa, and the United States is involved with it. And, and this program is a key part of it. So it's terrific to be here with you. Thank you very much. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Todd Haskell. Appreciate the comments and traveling up here to be with us. I do want to recognize some of our local officials. I believe we have City Councilor Ann Beauregard in the audience. Give a wave. We also have, uh, yep, round, round of applause. Sure. <laughs> and we also have with us uh, Andrea Burton, the Director of Constituent Services for the Mayor. Uh, we now ask uh, Chamber Chair uh, Sue Joss to come up, and we're going to present, and our past president, uh, Brent Warren, uh, we're going to present a gift to each of our fellows, as well as a flag from, or a banner, from the Brockton Rotary Club. As I understand it, uh, many of your communities have Rotary International uh, chapters uh, in your countries and maybe in your city, and uh, we would be honored uh, for you to visit your Rotary Club and deliver this banner on our behalf. And the gift we just want you to enjoy, okay? So. Right. <laughs> Harold Tavares uh, is going to read their names, yep. and, uh, as, and they're going to come up in that order. Okay, perfect. <coughs> first of all, first, Njamba from Angola. Ah. <laughs> Felizberto from Angola. Lichani from Botswana. Eredis from Cape Verde. Amino from Cameroon. Daniel from Cameroon. Malanin from Ethiopia. <laughs> Malet from Ethiopia. <laughs> Leah from Kenya. <laughs> Rele from Lesotho. Seidel from Liberia. Pretty from Mauritius. 
Joseph from Mauritius. Jimmy from Nigeria. Gloria from Nigeria. Ayodele from Nigeria. Nigeria from Santume. Aja from Senegal. Bridget from Sierra Leone. Wendy from South Africa. Kumalo from South Africa. Simfuli from South Africa. Kwandili from Switzerland. Switzerland. Sounds like Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. Swazi. Davina from Uganda. Zaka from Uganda. Thank you all for being such fine representatives of Africa, and we, we are so pleased that you're here.